Hi, this is Miss Litton, um, and this is seventh grade support on Monday. Say hello. hello. These are excellent AP Bio students. So we're going to quickly review Chapter Seven Photosynthesis. We want to remember plants are examples of autotrophs, and we are heterotrophs. So plants will take the inorganic which would be carbon dioxide, and they are able to reduce it into an organic compound like glucose, but they don't even have to go as far as glucose. How far could they go? PG, AL, or genes repeat, exactly. Okay, and then we as heterotrophs, we consume those preformed organic materials. We know about the reactants for, um, photosynthesis, we know how we acquire them and where they use them. So let's look at the reaction and let's identify those, those different things. So CO2, how does a plant access CO2? Through their what? Stomata. Stomata. Where is CO2 used in the process of photosynthesis? In the dark reaction, the Calvin cycle, or the light independent reaction. That's when you use CO2. And you fix it from a gas to a solid, and who do you hook it up with? Not the affectionate name, the real name. RUVP. Good. Good answer. Okay. Um, next component, water. How do plants acquire water? Through the root. Why do we use water in photosynthesis? Source of hydrogen ions for our, pro, for our gradient, our proton gradient. It's also a source of electrons to get excited. And first, those electrons are used to reduce who? NADP. And then those same electrons from water are used to reduce who? Carbon dioxide, right? Once it's a fixed RUVP and it breaks in half. So the same electrons that were once in water are initially used to reduce NADP in the light reaction, and then they're used, the NADP becomes oxidized, and those same electrons are used to reduce the CO2 into sugar to give it a high energy, okay? Um, let's look, at, we need solar energy as a reactant because the sun's energy is gonna do what? Excite the electrons, perfect. Um, to get them at a higher energy level so they can go through a what? ETC. Not once, but twice. twice. Perfect. Okay, let's look at our products. C6H1206, that's glucose. You don't actually have to make glucose, but where do we get the glucose from? From what, re what reaction? Yeah, dark reaction, Calvin cycle, light, independent reaction. And another product we have is oxygen. Where does that come from? Splitting of water. Because we get hydrogen and we get oxygen, yes? Okay. So you want to be able to recognize when you see the reaction what gets reduced, what gets oxidized. So the CO2 is getting reduced into the glucose. The water is getting oxidized, releasing the oxygen. The electrons that were in the water, because the water got <coughs> oxidized, those same electrons are what's ultimately reducing your CO2 into a sugar. Ask your bio buddy, bless you, is there anything I said right now that you're a little shaky on? Go ahead, talk with your bio buddy. Can I make a strong suggestion? There may be something, hi, I'm here now. There may be something that I say right now that you're like, mm. and then when I go through everything, you're like, oh, that's right. So what you can do is make comments in your group shared review notes. Make a comment to yourself. Assign it to yourself. I would put at W. Litton if I wanted it assigned to me, and I would write my question. And then look to see if you can resolve all those comments before the end of the review that you ask me about them to make sure it's resolved, okay? We write down that question as you're thinking about it. Okay, so now we know the big, the big ticket items of the reaction. Let's talk about structure and anatomy of where this reaction is going to take place. If something is green, it's more than likely it's photosynthetic. And what's causing it to be green? Pigment. What pigment in particular? Chlorophyll. Okay. Um, chlorophyll um, absorbs green light. True or false? False. False. What does it do? Reflects green light, hence the color green. Yeah? Okay. Can it absorb red light? 
Purple light, orange light. Who can't absorb orange light? Carotenoid, another pigment. But carotenoid can absorb green light, right? It just cannot absorb that orange red light. What is the advantage? How does that increase an organism's fitness to have variable pigment? Absorbing different wavelengths of light off the electromagnetic spectrum. More opportunities, more opportunities to acquire that energy. More ways to get that light and harvest it. What do you call the area that actually does the harvesting, that transfers it? The, there is a photosystem. What is it called inside the photosystem? It's the reaction center. And who's at the center of the reaction center? Chlorophyll A. Good. Perfect. Okay, so when you look at this cross section of, the, of this leaf and we see all the different cells and within the cells we see the chloroplast and I'm looking into the interior of the chloroplast and I see green hollow pancakes. What are the green hollow pancakes called? Thylakoid. It's thylakoid membranes, but they're called what? Grana, the multiple. Grana, but there's one, right? And what occurs on the, the thylakoid membrane itself? The light reaction. What happens inside the thylakoid membrane? The hollow part. Yeah, hydrogen ion gradient. You concentrate the hydrogen ions inside the green hole. Who does it? PQ. PQ brings the hydrogen ions in the interior. Then when they go back out into the stroma, they have to go through something. Who do they go through? ATP synthase complex. And in that process, as they're, what, increasing or decreasing entropy? When they go out, what are they doing? Increasing entropy, right? Decreasing entropy would be putting them inside. If they get to go back out to the other side, it's like letting water out of your dam. That's increasing the disorganization, right? When they go back out, okay, that's when you can make that ATP. Now the ATP is out there in the stroma, and once you're done with photosystem what? One or two, do you have reduced NADP? Photosystem two, you know you're gonna remember this? What's, it starts with water, right? What's the formula for water? H2O, photosystem two. Okay, and photosystem one is where you reduce the NADP. Okay, so as a result of photosystem one, you have the reduced NADP, okay, ultimately is what you form from it. And then from photosystem two, you had the, you had, um, the oxygen got formed there, right? Okay. So you have ATP, you have reduced NADP, you're out in the stroma. Now it's out in the stroma, the space around the green pancakes that you do the what? Dark reaction, the Calvin cycle, the light independent reaction. Now, anatomy of photosynthesis. Do you know where everything occurs? Ask your bio buddy. Are you good with that? Understand? Anything you need to go over? <laughs> if you have them. Is there any that has to be answered right now, otherwise you're afraid you can't go on? Anything? I'm going to keep going? Yes? You're being very quiet. Yes? Okay, children. All right, so then we look at the electromagnetic spectrum. These are all forms of light energy, okay? But the ones that the plants pay attention to is it just in the visible spectrum, for the most part, yeah? Okay. Who has more energy, purple or red? Purple. Because that wavelength is? Yeah. Okay. And we talked about what can happen with light. Um, and then when we look at um, a cross section of a chloroplast, we know that the light energy is getting picked up by pigments in the thylakoid membranes, exciting electrons. You're getting hydrogen ions concentrated in the interior. They're going back out, making ATP, ultimately reducing NADP out here in the space around them. And the stroma is where you do your dark reaction, Calvin cycle, light independent reaction. Okay. Um, when we look at the usefulness of the light, we can see there's some peaks on either end here. 
and that's where the chlorophylls are doing their work, chlorophyll A. And chlorophyll B is just to the interior, and then we can see a third pigment here, a carotenoid, and there are other pigments besides that, but those are the main ones. So if you used a spectrophotometer to look at an action spectrum, this action spectrum should make sense to you because it can use the most light on either ends due to chlorophyll A and B. All right. Now, um, you do see those other colors of leaves, and that's because in the winter, the first pigment to break down are the chlorophylls. And there was so much chlorophyll that once they're gone, that's when you can start to see some of these other colors, like the oranges and the reds. Also, in the winter, when you don't have as much light, the angle of the light's changing because we're going into winter, some of these other pigments are more effective because it's not as bright. Okay, so they will actually synthesize these pigments as well. All right, now, let's talk about the two reactions. The first one is the light-dependent reaction. This is how I first introduced it. I'm going to go one more slide here. So I'm going to walk you through just real quickly the reactions, and then we'll sing the song, make sure you understand them, and look at the, some of the evolution of that. All right, so I'm going to start, I'm going to explain it from left to right. But now that you know this reaction, I'm going to tell you, electrons get excited here in photosystem one. The electron transport chain, remember, t transfers them a little bit, but ultimately they get given to NADP to form reduced NADP. Now photosystem one is down two electrons. Who re resupplies photosystem one of those two electrons? The electron transport chain. Who resupplies the electron transport chain? Photosystem two. Who resupplies photosystem two? The water. That's really how the reaction goes down. I'm just teaching it left to right because it's, it's easier to make more sense, okay, from left to right. So we're going to start with water. We break the water in half. We get what gas? Oxygen. And we get two because it's H O and we are in photosystem two, okay? Then the hydrogens, the hydrogen ions that gave up those two electrons, they get concentrated sweep, sweep inside the thylakoid membrane contributing to our electrochemical gradient, yes? Those two electrons get excited by the sun as they're moving through the electron transport chain, which is a series of redox reactions. The re receptor gets excited by those electrons and it gets oxidized and they just keep getting passed along. One of those acceptors, okay, is who? PQ, and when he gets the electrons, he's able to take hydrogen ions from the stroma and put them to the interior of the thylakoid membranes, also contributing to that hydrogen ion gradient. So as a result of that, they want to go out back into the stroma and they go through ATP synthase complex and you make ATP. I need ATP for the next step, okay? So I'm accruing it now, but I'm gonna use it in the next step. Same two electrons, they're now in, considered in photosystem <coughs> one. They also get excited by the sun. You also have a second electron transport chain, but we don't let them go down and lose all of their energy. Keeping them at a higher energy level, we can use those electrons to reduce NADP. Then you take the ATP that you made and you take the reduced NADP. Do you need to go pick up the oxygen you made too? No, you don't need the oxygen in the dark reaction Calvin cycle light independent reaction. You take those electrons and you use them there. Now this is called non-cyclic photophosphorylation. You have three phosphorylations you know about right now. Okay, this is non-cyclic photophosphorylation, which means electrons are coming in via water and going out via what? NADP. Reduced NADP. So it's coming in and out, just like food goes in your mouth and out. Non-cyclic, it's not going roundy round, okay? And it's photophosphorylation, which means you're using what? Light to do the phosphorylation right here in this electron transport chain to make ATP. You know about two other phosphorylations. What's the one when I just hand a phosphate group from one molecule to another? What's that called? It starts with an S. Substrate level. Boom, shakalaka. Substrate, yeah, she just popped that off. Substrate level phosphorylation. And then we started to learn the steps of cellular respiration. What's that called? What did I just take in? Oxidative phosphorylation in electron transport chain. Okay, those are the three types of phosphorylation. This is just one of three that we've talked about. Okay, cyclic photophosphorylation does not make two things that the last one makes. 
What two things do we not make when it just goes roundy, roundy, round? Does it make any reduced NADP or oxygen because we didn't split any water? Okay, good. Now, if I did the light reaction, I am now ready to take the ATP and the reduced NADP to our Calvin cycle dark reaction, light independent reaction, all the same thing. What I'm hoping to do is take CO2 as a gas and fix it into ultimately a sugar. So here, remember we said that there were three parts to this process. Step one is carbon fixation, gas to a solid. Step two is when you give it energy, you give it energy from ATP and from reduced what? NADP. Then you end up making six powerful G, G3Ps or PGAL. You have six of those, but you want to keep the cycle going, so you only take away one. And when you take away one, how many carbons are you taking out of that system? Three. three. But how many carbons did we put into it? Three. three. So it's fair, right? We had three individual CO2s. We're pulling out three carbons all hooked together. Okay? And if we do that twice, then we would have a whole glucose. So we just remove one. We're left with five of these powerful, like, $50 bills. We use some ATP, and that's step three. Regeneration of RUBP so we can do the cycle again and again and again. We just have to keep priming the pump so we can keep cranking out glucose. So we looked at that. We looked here to look at the number of carbons in each one of those molecules. Um, we looked at that. You're good with that. I think we'll just go right here. So we have three RUBPs. Each one of them gets a CO2. When a CO2 hooks up with RUBP, stable or unstable? Unstable. So it breaks in half. Since we have three of them, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six low, low energy molecules. So we're going to pump them up with energy. What are we going to use? ATP and our reduced NADP. So we're left with ADP now, an oxidized NADP. Where can that go? Back to the light reaction and get used again, right? Like a toggle switch. Okay? So now we have six high energy molecules. We skim off one. We have five left. We rearrange them using ATP and do the whole thing again. If we've done it twice, we have two glucose, well, I mean two $50 bills, which we can make $100 bill glucose. Okay, any questions with that? Ask your bio buddy. What part do you not understand yet? G3P, a G3P you have, you can leave it as is, because remember when we do glycolysis with the glucose, what's the first thing we do? Break it in half, okay? And you'll make G3P, so if you're a plant, you might want to just leave it there so it doesn't, you have, don't have to do the energy investment stage of cellular respiration. Um, otherwise, they can hook it up into glucose, fructose, sucrose, make fatty acids, amino acids, store that sugar as starch, or use it to build cell walls as cellulose. So it is the pre-building block of all the other building blocks. That's how critical it is. All right, let's try the song. Think the chemistry of the song while we do it. Remember, for those of you that are not here, this song is posted on my YouTube channel, Photosynthesis Song. Just there's, look for the one that has the most views. Okay, okay, got your watering can. Now, if you do not understand part of the song, remember the song is just to help us remember the chemistry, right? Okay, here we go. Water, 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 water. What are we gonna do? Break it in half. What do we get? Oxygen and electrons. Sweet, sweet. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons. And it gets the electrons excited. And you, oh, sorry, P U. And you make some ATP. Boom. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons, and it gets the electrons excited. Who catches it? 
NADP. Forming reduced NADP. Then you take some ATP and some reduced NADP to the dark reactions or the Calvin cycle or the light independent reactions. You ready? Here we go. 3C5 plus 3C1 makes 3C6. Break down to 6C3. Mm. Use some ATP. Use some reduced NADP on your 6C3. Take one away. PJLG3P. And you're left with 5C3. Use some ATP to build 3C5 plus 3C1 makes 3C6. Break down to 6C3. Use some ATP. Use some reduced NADP on your 6C3. Take one away. Glucose. And you're left with 5C3. Use some ATP to build. Three, C, five, stop. So awesome. I'm so proud of you. All right, now. RUBP. Who is RUBP supposed? Who is RUBP supposed to hook up with? CO2. And carbon fixation. Hey. And who are we concerned that it might hook up with? Oxygen. oxygen. Why would it hook up with oxygen? Because the CO2 levels are down and the O2 levels are because we closed our stomata. Okay, because we're afraid of water loss. Okay, what is it called if RUBP does not hook up with CO2 and fix it? What is it called? Photorespiration. Is this good for a plant? No. Is it bad? Yes. Always? Yes. So plants try to avoid photorespiration. There's two ways to avoid photorespiration. A partition in space or a partition in time. Okay, so we looked at a couple of strategies. Um, here, this is most plants, okay? They are what's called C3 plants. But these C4 plants, an anatomically, they're different. They have taken the bundle sheath cells that are around the veins. They are larger, they are green, they are photosynthetic, and they are surrounded with those mesophyll cells. That's called Krantz anatomy, German for wreath. It looks like a wreath inside of there. And that is a partition in space because what these plants are adapted to do is to isolate where the Calvin cycle occurs. They isolate it into the bundle sheath cells, and a compound called PEP binds with CO2, escorts it into the bundle sheath cells so that the RUBP is never tempted by the fruit of another. So that is one strategy, a partition in space. Okay? Strategy number two is CAM plants. And CAM plants, when it's cool in the night and the stomata are open, same compound, PEP, fixes CO2 and stores up a storehouse of CO2 inside the interior of the plant. So when it's hot during the day and the stomata are closed and the O2 levels are building and the CO2 levels are going down, it can release the CO2 into the atmosphere and provide CO2 to REVP so it's not tempted by the fruit of another. And I think that is it. I do have practice questions. Do you want to try to do them again? Yes. Okay, let's log in as our favorite color. So walk out that door. <laughs> I'm going to pause you for a second. Questions you want to ask me? Anything? Feeling confident? Yes. Nice and quiet. I can hear her. The reaction center is part of the photosystem, the part that actually transfers the energy that is solar into an electron to a higher energy level in chlorophyll A. What else? Anything else? Am I not seeing you? Yes. Partition. Partition in space and time? 
Okay, so our EVP can't be trusted, right? We've already talked about this as a class. Okay, so our EVP can't be trusted. So one way to protect from her poor choices of gardening tools is to put her in a room off on her own, which would be the bundle sheet cell around the vein, and allow PEP to escort the CO2 to her so she's never tempted by oxygen. Because PEP is super faithful. So PEP will only hook up with CO2, will never hook up with oxygen. Guys, don't, guys, when you talk, it gets distracting on the, on the video, okay? So it'll escort it in. That's a partition in space. Like, our EVP, you stay over there, I will bring you CO2. Partition in time is you fix the CO2 during the nighttime and you just make a warehouse of CO2 using PEP. But you can't do anything with it because you need the light reaction, light dependent reaction to do the light independent reaction, right? So during, when the light's out, when the sun's up and the stomata closed, you have all this CO2 stored up and you release it so our EVP is not tempted by oxygen. Does that make sense? Okay, anything else? All right, we'll go ahead and start this and then I'll try to display the questions. Okay, so here is question number one. And I'm gonna switch it, so pause it if you need to. Here is two. Again, pause if you need a second to think about it. If you're at home and you weren't able to come to the review, get out a piece of paper and number one to 10 and commit to your answer, isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. See, that's right. Okay, here's question three. Commit, don't just wait for me, commit. Question four. Question five. Question six. Keep in mind, these questions, I didn't put any pictures of a chloroplast on there, but I could on your test, right? You gotta have a picture of a chloroplast, I can say, what happens here, what happens here? Question seven. This question right here, question seven, it should have an arrow going sun plus CO2. Oh, it does, Never mind. You've got an arrow. Oh no, the arrow's in the wrong spot. You guys, look at this. This arrow's in the wrong spot. Dang it. Dang it. That's a terrible question. Did that confuse you? Guy, Miss Litton. Here's question eight. Okay, here comes question nine. And question number 10. Guys, hear me. Do you all have access to a Chromebook? So when you are talking about them out loud, we can hear you and we can hear the answers that you are choosing and everybody else can too. Please don't do that because it takes away the learning opportunity for those children, okay? Um, I don't know, there might be some people that are, let's see, 10, let's go Rojo. And Satum yellow and green, let's go. We're gonna have to start, commit, commit, commit. Okay, here we go. Guys, I want to walk through them all quickly, okay? So please do not be disruptive. Which of these statements is true regarding chlorophyll? What's wrong with C? Look at C. What's wrong with C? There's multiple pigments, right? And also, chlorophyll is not the rarest pigment. It's the most common pigment. Good. Okay? Question number two, good job, you all got that. Question number three, um, chloroplasts use the energy to make some ATP. How would you know not to choose NADP? What would I have said if I wanted to talk about that? Not make, but I would have said what? Reduce. Reduce, good. 
All right, number four, yay. Five, yay. Six, yes. Seven is a yes. Uh-oh. Three C five plus three C one. Okay, so somebody said P G A L. No. No? Never. You never have P G A L with CO2. Somebody said glucose. What's wrong with you? No. No. Nine. Solar. I would say that's your operative word right there. Solar energy, what do you think of when you think of solar energy? I think the about sun. the sun. Oh. Yeah, so that would be, is absorbed in the light dependent. Do you need the sun's, guys, do you need the sun's energy for the light independent? No, that would be independent of light, without it, okay? And number 10, okay. What process occurs you guys, the Calvin cycle can't occur when oxygen is present for some plants because they hook up with it and it's called the photo respiration. Okay? Remember to do your highly suggested reading and thinking. Also, I need all chairs up. I got to do it every day. All chairs up. If you can help with the conversation. Make good choices. Highly suggested reading and thinking. You got this.